The road to the championship goes through Anchorage, Alaska. Welcome, everybody, for the first game of the Season 12 SFL Semifinals. Tonight's matchup features the Baltimore Vultures taking on the Alaska Storm for the third time this season. Good evening, everyone. I am Mike Daggs, your play-by-play -play commentator tonight. Alongside me in the booth is the Hall of Famer, Matt Wilson, and with us tonight in the Stats Roadmasters, Grayson Willis. How's it going tonight, Matt? Excited to be here, Mike. It's our biggest game of the season. Absolutely is. So, Matt, Alaska's only lost three games this season. Two of them have been to Baltimore. These two teams faced each other to get season 12 started back in week one where Baltimore pulled a surprising upset, knocking off the defending champions 23 to 10. Five weeks later, they did it again, 24 to 16. Tonight, Alaska's the number one seed in the playoffs, but facing the only team that seems to have their number. What are the keys to victory tonight for these two teams? Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Did I say turnovers? Yes, I did. These teams are about as equally matched as you can get in the SFL. Dynamic offenses, punishing defenses. It can all come down to who capitalizes the most off the other's mistakes. If both teams play their best ball, we could be in for the most competitive game of the season. Will Baltimore win three in a row, or will Alaska finally figure out the Vultures? Mike, there's only one way to find out, and that's on the field. All right, Matt, let's head down to the field to get this one started then. Alaska has the ball teed up. They are ready for kickoff. Disco Fudd checking with his teammates, making sure he is ready to go. And we are underway here in Anchorage, Alaska. Kick taken three yards deep in the end zone, being returned out. Just gets it up past the 21-yard line and leveled is Giovanni Bolt, the return man. That'll get the Baltimore offense out here to get things started, led by Mike Dazzo, the all-time leader in yards in SFL history, over 30,000 on his career, the first quarterback to ever hit 30,000 yards in the SFL. Single back formation, three wide receivers to get things going. Dazzo under center. Dazzo looking to pass, pressure coming. He throws, but he was hit as he throws and it goes nowhere. The defense of Alaska Storm getting to him. There's Big Sexy. Let's take a look at the key players here on the Baltimore offense. Mentioned quarterback Mike Dazzo. Halfback in his second season is T. Roy Gaines. Almost 1,400 yards in the regular season. Wide receivers Bishop Warfield. Warfield had a, an amazing game uh, last week. And daily holder, tight end is Lloyd Graham Jr. Power eye formation here on second down and 10. Dazzo will throw once again. This time getting the ball away and complete for a short gain of four yards called in by Warfield. So far we've seen one of the cornerstones, one of the keys of the Alaska defense. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Dazzle's been under fire, so he's gonna have to use all of those years of veteran uh, experience to move the ball here. Third down and six, trips formation to the top of your screen. Dazzo to throw once again, checks it down to Gaines in the backfield. The storm yeah. defense wraps him right up, brings him down, tackled for a loss. will bring up a fourth and 10. And you saw Alaska there playing man, pushing those receivers out of the way. Well, not pushing, but gently gliding them out of the way. And that seemed to be uh, Dazzo's only choice, but not a good start for the Vultures. Zero yards gained on their first offensive possession. And Pablo Gates back to punt for the Vultures. Kick taken back at about the 43-yard line, returned up to the 47. Returned back by Ryan Tobin and Matt. Let's take a look at that team comparison. Yeah, I mean, seventh and second, I mean, there's not that much difference between the two. First and second points per game allowed defensively, just great. Baltimore has the big edge of turnover differentials, so we'll see if they can create some right here in this first drive. So Ron Cochran leading his offense out onto the field. Three receiver set here to get things going. Cochran hands the ball off to Robert Merrill, who runs straight into a wall of defenders. Gains two yards. Let's take a look at the key players here on the Alaska Storm offense. Quarterback Ron Cochran entering his fourth season, completing his fourth season, I should say, in the league. Halfback Robert Merrill, who we just saw. Fullback Jason Williams pretty much splits carries with Merrill. Wide receivers are Jeff Como and the one and only Optimus Klein. Don't call out Klein or he'll have a big day. <laughs> Cochran back to throw out route to the top of the screen. Hauled in, nice gain of six. 
There's Klein right there. He called his name, Mike, and he'll be there. That'll bring up a third down and two for the number one Alaska Storm. So we take a look at Amon Takes. Cochran to throw on third down, going deep over the middle. Wide oh, open is his receiver, bye -bye. and he is gone into the end zone for a touchdown. Jeff Como, and there is Alaska on the board early. Yeah, and I think in this game, Alaska has to rely more on their passing game than their running game because with no uh, high-priced defensive lineman, Cochran's going to have all day to peruse the field, find his target like he did there, and that is a pretty much walk-in touchdown for Como. Storm making that one look a little too easy against one of the best defenses in points allowed. As you saw in that team comparison, both of these teams just very stingy in allowing points, and Alaska able to work their way down the field quick and easy on that one. They held them to a third down, but it wasn't enough. And Matt, we've called a few Alaska games this season, and it seems every time we do, yeah, this is what we see is Alaska just marching up and down the field with ease. Extra point is up and good, and Alaska has the lead in this one, 7-0 over Baltimore. The SFL is presented by APM Music, production music library and custom music house, and is brought to you in part by Extraordinary Everest, heartfelt messages on the most extraordinary place on earth. Bit Central and Fuel, transforming SFL media in 2019. Harry's, all you need for a close, comfortable shave. Fudd kicks the ball away. Bolt standing back in his own end zone again, takes this one out. Returns it straight back up to the 21-yard line where he got it to last time. And Dazzo will bring his offense back out onto the field. Let's take a look at the key players here on the Alaska Storm defense. We already saw defensive ends Alex Dominguez, Big Sexy, and Kevin Bain, the two of them just absolutely wreaking havoc on offenses throughout the entire league all season long. Cornerbacks Ryan Davidson and Evan Carroll are joined by free safety Ryan Tobin and strong safety Andrew Francis. Dazzo to pass. Still no runs for Gaines. Throw over the middle is tipped oh. and incomplete. Tobin got his hands on it. We'll bring up a second down and 10. And Matt, are you surprised that we haven't seen uh, T. Roy Gaines yeah. have a single carry yet? I know it's only the second second drive, but... I know I beat this drum probably every time we uh, broadcast a game, but Alaska has no high-priced linebackers. So getting a four-wide set and run gains up the middle. You're avoiding the two defensive ends, and uh, he can break a tackle or two. He might be gone. Dazzo to throw again. Quick throw over the middle. That one is complete. Hauled in by Lloyd Graham Jr. for his first catch of the day and the first Baltimore first down. Alaska running a stunt there up front, and... Uh, Dazzo had all day to look back and just find his man. Quick, quick passes. You need quick passes and runs up the middle. Dazzo under pressure and no. down he goes. Hit and brought down for a sack. Brought down by Kevin Bain, the number two man in the league with 22 and a half sacks. Only a half sack away from tying for number one in the league. Looks like a quick swim move there, and uh, Dazzo's helpless. And again, that's a perfect formation to run off of, in my opinion, on first down. Now you got to throw the ball because, I mean, second and 17, you could try running it, I guess. But I don't know. We'll see what Baltimore comes out with. They have two tight ends here. Kevin Bain coming over from Tallahassee in free agency, an excellent acquisition by the Storm. Checked it down to Gaines. He's able to gain yeah. about 12 on that one bring up a third and manageable five and you know that's much better you, you kind of bunch them up there with the two tight ends and then you throw a little swing to the outside and look there's no one there those linebackers are not going to be able to catch t-roy gains and he gains quote most of the yards back so now you're a very manageable third and five i'd love to see him you know get a running back back there for some blocking and then just run a quick out or a quick slant don't let dominguez and bain have time to uh Get to your quarterback. Power eye formation here on third down and five. Dazzo will throw. Dazzo has time throwing it down the field and it's nearly picked off. Evan Carroll got his hands on it but can't haul it in. 
Good call. They left the fullback back in there to block. Maybe I would have liked to see that gun. But, you know, it's a pretty good set just to misfire there in Baltimore. But again, no points. And they haven't really moved the ball too far down the field. So Alaska will probably get pretty good field position again. Gates on to punt once again for the Vultures. Punt taken back at about the 25 yard line and returned up to the 27, where we will see Ron Cochran and company leading the offense back out onto the field. Let's take a look at the key players here on the Baltimore Vultures defense. At linebacker, Joe Dazzo, also known as Papa Joe, joined by Fellow co-conspirator Amon takes. Cornerbacks are Kaz McFly and Hendricks the Wild Thornberry. Safeties Tony Willis and Giovanni Bolt round out the key players on the Vulture defense. First down and 10 from the 27-yard line. Cochran back to throw. Has time, fires over the middle, and that one is also complete to Jeff Como. Benefactor of the last reception. Now two catches for 65 yards and a touchdown. Como oh, there. Look at this little stutter step. Runs a post. Watch this. He just, I don't know what he did there. He's like, he's trying to avoid someone and got walloped for his troubles, but still a nice gain for Alaska and looking like a well-oiled machine. And again, getting pressure on Cochran is a good thing, but I don't know if Baltimore has the weapons to do it. Split backs in the backfield. Cochran changing the play at the line. Cochran throws down to Klein at the bottom of the Ooh. screen. He does not catch it. I think he had it, Matt. I think he had one foot in, yeah. I don't know if it's worth a challenge to on a first down. It's not going to even be – if you win the challenge, it's going to be not even a first down. So I would just keep the flag in my uh, pocket. As well as you're moving the ball down the field, just try again. Take a look at Optimus Klein there. Second down and 10 from their own 48-yard line. 6.41 to go here in the first quarter. Ball is handed off. Merrill taking the X actually Jason Williams getting his first carry of the day. Carries it up the middle for a gain of three. He'll bring up a third and seven. And that's where I think Alaska should take advantage. Run that set. Make uh, Baltimore use that 4-3 and then throw out of it because you're, Jason Williams is an exceptional pass target as well. So you catch him in a uh, run defense and throw out of it. But this is the complete opposite. <laughs> Empty backfield for Cochran. Quick pass over the middle. That one is complete for a first down. Nice catch and grab there. Called in by P.J. Hernandez, one of the backup receivers. Keeps this drive alive. I already escaped from Mexico. He's one of our boys. Come back. First down and 10, there's an offset eye formation. Ball is checked down to Merrill, and he gains three. So we take a look at the comparison of the quarterbacks so far today. Obviously, Dazzo has not had a lot of success yet, but just a couple of possessions. He's been under fire. But that's what I've been talking about. There, They ran even a pretty much a full set there, a heavy set, and they threw out of it. Not big yards there, but it could hit big in the future. Cochran making a change to the play again. Seven-step drop, firing deep over the middle, and he's got oh. Klein. Klein's into the end zone for another Alaska touchdown. Oh, boy. And he's, I don't know what he's doing with the ball. It's not acceptable for all audiences there, Optimus, but, you know, whatever. Cochran <laughs> here, again, no pressure on Cochran. He sits back in a clean pocket. Blown coverage there. Safety's not playing deep enough, and... Klein just walks in for the touchdown and then celebrates like only Optimus can. Well, that is Optimus Klein for us, so. Hey, more Klein's power to him. When you get in the end zone in the semifinals, you can do whatever you want. Our Optimus apologizes, but no. <laughs> no take backs, he's Optimus, sorry. Extra point is up and through. 14 nothing here in Alaska over Baltimore. I, I, I didn't see this coming. Well, me neither, Matt. And, you know, it's obviously far, far from over. 
There's plenty of time left here. Baltimore last week won over the New Orleans Faroes 62-34. to They never even trailed in that one. So they certainly can put up points, and their defense certainly is capable of stopping the opponent's offense from scoring points. So we will, uh, we will see what happens. Yeah. I don't know why they're not involving Gaines. They need to get Gaines involved now on this drive. You don't want to get down 21 zip and then you can't run the ball anymore. Or at least running it isn't effective. You've got a great back in Gaines. You know, give him a couple carries. Give him two carries here. Let's see what happens. Dazzler to no. throw pressure coming, fires into traffic, and that one is incomplete trying to hit Bishop Warfield. And. You know, I, I don't blame him for trying to hit Warfield, Matt. Warfield had 13 receptions for almost 300 yards and four touchdowns, including a long of 64 yards last week against New Orleans. So, you know, certainly was a popular target. Oh. But also in that same game, Matt, T. Roy Gaines had 18 carries for 267 yards of his own, averaging that's almost what I'm, 15 that's, yards a carry. He averaged yeah, almost 15 what, yards a carry on those 18 carries. You got to get Gaines involved. <laughs> Yes, you do. Not yet, though. Dazzo, out route oh. to the top of the screen. Graham with his second reception gains about six. Now, see, that's a good play, but if if Gaines had gained three yards on uh, first down, I mean, you're dealing with a you know, two, third and two or first down. Yeah, so now on third I, and four, I, they'll likely throw, although there's split uh -huh. backs in the backfield. Not wanting to punt again. Dazzle throwing over the middle, has his target, and that one is complete for a first down to Daly Holder. Alaska set the blitz. Baltimore had their two running backs back to block. Watch, you'll see it here. Look at that. Couldn't get pressure, and Dazzle delivers a nice, ooh. Passing. That's kind of a rough hit in the back there. That could have been a little unnecessary roughness, but the refs, uh, it's, it's playoff football. Hopefully they've swallowed their flags for the most part. <laughs> Trips formation to the bottom of the screen. Dazzo under center. Dazzo checking it down to there Gaines, getting him involved in the passing game, and Gaines with some nice yardage there. Gaines nine up to midfield, four minutes to go. And Matt, what was one of the big differences between these two teams, uh, the first two matchups that they had? Well, in that game, well, those two games combined, Ron Cochran threw a grand total of five interceptions with only one touchdown during those first two games, whereas Dazzo threw for five touchdowns and only one pick. Cochran already with a couple of oh. touchdowns today. That pass overthrown. Yeah, I, I think Alaska's come out with a different set. They're jamming the receivers at the line, and it's throwing off these routes. And so if I'm Baltimore, you got to counter with the run. Third and one here, and give it to T-Roy. Let him get that first down. Let's get this drive a churning. Yeah, this is this is T Roy territory right here. Four four what? wide receivers trying to get the defense spread out, but you do have eight in the box. They're not spread at all. That's the problem. And they will throw, trying to take advantage of that defensive look, and it works out in their favor as that one is hauled in by Warfield for another Baltimore first down. So not what I would have expected to see, Matt, but it worked. It worked, but I don't know. I just I don't I'm I'm not getting a good feeling out of this playbook what they're calling so far. I mean, these completions are working so far, but it's only a matter of time before Dominguez and Bain wreck your drive with one sack and then you're in big, big trouble. Short drop for Dazzo and that one's picked yeah. off. Went to the well too many times and it was hauled away. Evan Carroll with his fourth interception on the season. Again, they tried to, uh, see, look at that. He bumped him off his route. Dazzo was expecting his receiver to be there and instead a storm was there. So, again, T. Roy, he, he, he's the key. He's, he's the missing key. In action. Yeah. He's being used in the passing game only. So, not not what we expected to see out of the Baltimore offense. This isn't what I expected to see out of the Alaska offense, quite frankly. Uh, Marilyn well, Williams right. taking a break as we go five wide. Cochran to throw, fires over the middle, complete. Nice gain of but five. Mike, we'll bring up a second and five. It's so smart because there, there's no one on that defensive line that's going to give Alaska any trouble as far as pass rush. They're going to give you trouble if you run the ball. So Ron Cocker's a great quarterback. Just let him chuck the ball and only run when necessary. 
Ron Cochran, a fantastic quarterback, actually number one in the league in completion percentage this season with 76%. Fires that one over the middle, and that one's also complete to Optimus Klein. Ron Cochran with 3,400 yards, 29 touchdowns, only 19 picks. 76% completion percentage is good for number one in the league. Yep. And interesting enough, the first two games, Matt, Cochran only averaged a completion percentage of 67% in both games. So, you know, the, the Baltimore defense able to keep him in check in those games. I think Max Paul was able to uh, see what went wrong in those two matchups. And so far, it appears he's made the correct adjustments. Yeah. It appears Baltimore has made some other adjustments. Three wide with an offset eye. Cochran hands the ball off to Merrill, running straight up the middle, gets a nice gain of five up to the 35-yard line as we tick down under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. And there he ran Merrill, and uh, Baltimore was in a nickel defense on a 4-3, so that's a perfect time to run. It's when they're in that 4-3 that I'd like to see Alaska throw. Like right here. Ball's handed off to Merrill again. That time he gains nothing. He'll bring up a third down and five. Again, when you've got Dazzo and Takes at linebacker kind of gumming up that middle, your your fullback dives and your halfback runs up the middle aren't going to be as effective. So that's that's the strength of this defense. Four wide receivers for the Storm offense. Cochran, play action. Fires over the middle, and that one's complete for yet another Alaska first down. Yep. Ron Cochran just surgically just taking, I mean, like I say, no pressure in the pocket, and he's just surgically picking apart this defense. No pressure, no problem. That one taken by Williams up the middle, only a short gain of one, and that was an interesting stat that I saw Matt too when I was looking at the stats from their first two matchups. Merrill and Williams combined gained only 20 yards in week one when these two teams met. 20 yards between the two of them. Right. They and can, like I said, that's right. You look at that and you're like, well, what do we do? Well, look at Cochran's stats. That's right. Shift towards your strength. Offset eye on second down. Cochran to throw. Gets Williams involved in the passing game. That one good for a gain of three. Bring up a third down and six as we roll up to the end of the first quarter. You're watching the SFL on Twitch. It's the semifinals. Stay with us. Third down and six to get the second quarter started. Ron Cochran in the gun. I'm Mike Daggs, your play-by-play -play commentator. Joined in the booth with the Hall of Famer, Matt Wilson. Cochran to throw, firing over the middle, complete. He gained the first down yardage he needed up to the 15-yard line. Grayson Willis in the stats roadmaster, as Matt likes to call it. Yep. It's not a stats truck, is it, Matt? Nope, it's a roadmaster, baby. Buick roadmaster. Chicks dig, Chicks dig the, the wood paneling. The wood paneling, wood. yeah. Wood paneling, uh, yeah, it, the, the kids and the ladies love it. Ron Cochran, 11 of 12 for 159 yards as he hands that one off yep. to Merrill. Wrapped right up at the line, no gain. Now they'll give him a, they'll, they'll spot him a yard, Matt. Second down and nine from the 14. So what you were saying, it, you know, it's true. Every time Alaska runs, they're not getting much. Every time they pass, it's first downs. Yeah. And, you know, and, and yeah. They, at least good good positive yardage. Cochran has yet to be really pressured too much. Well, second down and nine. He's alone in the backfield, so it looks like another pass coming up here as Cochran steps back, fires deep towards the end zone, and that one's nearly picked oh. off. So Thornberry had his hands on that one as he was trying to reach Jeff Como a second time in the end zone. So it's not always going to work, but... You know, you know, in Maryland Williams, they, they gained a little bit more in the second game. Well, when I say a little bit more, they passed 100 yards. They got 109 total yards in game two. But, but Matt, here's the crazy thing. We are in the second quarter of this ball game, and T. Roy Gaines has zero 
carries. None. Well, the first time these teams met, Gaines ran for 163 yards, averaging over five yards a carry. The second time they met, he only had 117, only, I mean, you know, triple-digit yardage. He averaged 8.4 yards per carry. Give the man the ball. Yeah, agreed. Cochran, back to pass, fires. Gets the first down, he... first and goal from the three-yard line. How does he do it? I don't know. That's P.J. Hernandez, I believe. I it is. It is indeed, Matt. I never forget a Mexican name. <laughs> and and now you can set up the run. One yard gains are okay when you have three downs to do That's it. it. Well, Cochran's still going to throw. He's going for his third touchdown pass. That one also batted away by Thornberry as he tried to hit Como on an out route. Second out and goal. So if they're going to pass here, this is where you got to make them pay. If you're Baltimore, you, you know if you can get a pick here. You know, the momentum shifts back over to your side a bit, but they throw a oh. touchdown. Hooey. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it's, not, it's not impossible, but it's definitely a long road back, especially with how efficient Alaska's been. Split backs in the backfield. Cochran making a change to the play. At the line, he will throw. Throwing it to the top of the screen. Momentum carrying him out of bounds is Merrill. Bring up a third down and goal after a loss of three. Third down and goal from the six. Might be a blessing in disguise for Alaska. It gives them more space. It gives them more room. I was just thinking that, Matt. Because they're not they're not gonna run it. So not on third and goal from the six. I wouldn't I wouldn't what, think so. This is what Baltimore has to step up and get a get, and get a pick. Joe Dazzo in the center of the field looking to try to take one away as he almost makes a play on it and he does. He gets the oh. hit. And that was actually Amon takes with the hit on Galino. Bring up a fourth and goal, and Disco Fudd will come out onto the field for a field goal try. Matt, he's one of only three kickers in the league that were perfect on the season. 25 of 25. Story of Disco Fudd, 25 of 25. <laughs> he needed not quite five. Thir- not, he, not quite yeah. 30 for 30, folks. Maybe he'll get to 30 for 30 before the season's over. If, if only he had three more. Well, those these are all regular season stats, so I'd have to oh. look and see what he had in the playoffs to, to do the maths, but maybe it is 30 for 30s. The kick is up and it is good from 22 yards out. And Alaska extends their lead 17, nothing over Baltimore. And you know, Matt, now we're in the second quarter. Baltimore will get the ball with nine minutes to go here in the first half. And uh, you know, now they're down 17. Do you think that changes their game plan even more steering it away from running the ball with T Roy? Are they still going to try to no. now get him involved? Well, they, they- Holding him to a field goal was key there because it was 21 nothing. I would agree, but 17 nothing. Eh. Touchdown only. You know, long touchdown drive. You're down 10. You know, anything's possible. But I still think you can't abandon T. Roy because you're under siege by constant pressure. So I, I think it's a bad idea to go. What they've been doing is throwing every down, run gains, spread the field, run gains. Well, Giovanni Bolt on that return, Matt. He, he is uh, nothing if not consistent. Gets it out to the 21 for the third time in a row. Again, look at look at this coverage. It's bump coverage. Dazzo continuing to pass, but getting Gaines involved in the passing game. Trucking through the defender, but too bad he was out of bounds. Gaines only two, second and eight. But again, think of the, what he could do with that if he had the ball in the middle of the field on a run play, right? One or two of those, and boy, we could be talking about a, a long one. So I, I'm so mystified by the play calling here. Under nine to go. No carries for T. Roy Gaines. It'll have to end at some point. So we have a two tight end formation, both tight ends on the line. Could this be the run? It's not. Dazzo checks it down to Gaines. Gaines can't get through the arms of Carroll, who wraps him up, tackles him. Third down and six coming up. And another thing about this press coverage is it's going to make your screen game a lot less efficient because everyone's playing on the line. So there's, you're not going to get a lot of space. So now Baltimore is forced to throw here. And again, we're going to see bump coverage. Dazzo fires over the middle. That one is complete. Good, Good enough for a Baltimore first down, and we will at least keep this drive alive as Graham hauls it in for first down yardage. and. 
you know, Matt, you know, Max Paul obviously has a uh, a lot of experience with Baltimore. Actually, got his start in Baltimore first as a wide receiver and kicker turner, and then eventually becoming the defensive coordinator of the team. So, you know, certainly knows a thing or two about Baltimore and their history, and you know, looking to stick it to him today as he wants to make it back to the championship yet again oh, there's hey. the first carry by t roy and where's that been all game as he stiff armed the defender into the ground and got huge yards a t roy phone home as uh finally got it a little bit off tackle look at that steam rolling that poor poor i believe it was a linebacker and uh just that's that's the gains they need gains they needed that's again, right one carry for 17 yards. Let's see if we can get more of those out of T-Roy Gaines and turn this back into a ball game. Yes. Dazzo, so pressure coming. coming. Hit as he throws. Ball's tipped away and incomplete. Excellent coverage by Ryan Tobin out of the free safety position. And they blitz the linebackers, bump man coverage again. and ugh, Again, it's just... It, it's T-Roy time. I mean... You know, run them on first, and then get, get, get your manageable second down in. Or just run them on first, and then you'll have another first down again if he keeps gaining those sorts of yards. Right. Split backs in the backfield, three receivers set. Two to the right, one to the left for Dazzo. One of the receivers fell oh. down when he tried to get going, and he's brought down for a sack. Big Sexy doing a little taunting here as he's getting involved in semifinal action. We're seeing a little bit of evolution here out of this defense. I've seen this from a couple other teams where they're just playing bump coverage and then sending the linebackers and the quarterbacks are just panicking. And again, what 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 beats a good uh, blitz? A run up the middle. If you if if you break it past that line, there's nobody there. Third and fourteen. No run here. Dazzo looking to throw, checks it down to Gaines. Can Gaines get the yards he needs? Lowers the shoulder, and he does. He gets the first down, T-Roy Gaines. Look at the bump coverage at the top. There's nobody open, but it did open up a nice lane for Gaines. He just needed to break the tackle and lowers the shoulder and does. Pays for it a little bit, but I'm sure he'll do that. Glad to take that all game long if he gets first downs. Alfredo Masonette, the linebacker, trying to bring him down and Gaines is having none of that. He's like, no, no, we need to keep this drive going. We need to score. Excuse me, Alfredo. First down at the 32-yard line. Dazzo to throw. Pressure coming. Down he goes. Big sexy. Two sacks on this drive alone. I don't know. It's a tough <laughs> poor, one. Poor Matt. Run the ball. <laughs> I, I, yeah, it's like beating a dead horse. I don't want to do it. I just don't know what to say. Look at look at this. You got to run the ball here. Second down in 17. They don't, but they do get it to Gaines behind the line of scrimmage. Gaines is able to get his way up to the 33-yard line. He's able to get back the sack yardage. Third down and 10 coming up. Gaines kind of had to reach back to that ball because Dazzo was under such duress. Third and 10, you got to pass. Okay. I'd love to see a shotgun with two backs to block. We'll see what they come up with. I don't want to see a naked Dazzo. Well, Gaines, you just saw him on the sideline. Oh, so no. You're going to see a naked Dazzo today, Matt. I didn't four want wide, to see it. Four wide plus a tight end. Dazzo to throw. Quick pass. Oh, he's got his target. Oh, and is picked oh. off. Intercepted by Ryan Tobin. Well, I said turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. Hasn't been that kind of day, but... Again, under under siege, he tries to throw that jump ball, and boy, what great coverage by Tobin reading the quarterback's eyes all the way and steps in front of the ball, gets the pick. Ron Cochran strutting his way back out onto the field. Alaska in full control in this one so far. Five minutes, 14 seconds to go here in the first half. Ball taken up the middle by Merrill, spinning his way up to the 23-yard line. Nice gain of four yards. Alaska's running game gets going, too. Oh, boy. It's going to be a long day at the office for Baltimore. They need a stop here badly. Now, 
No one really on that slot receiver at the bottom. Let's see if they decide to throw the ball. Cochran fires up to the top of the screen. That one hauled in. And he does get first down yardage. Didn't go to the slot guy. He was the slot guy was playing more of a decoy role, but plenty of room for that completion. Hey, this is what I wanted Baltimore to do. <laughs> Split max. Play action. Cochran firing deep into coverage, but that one is complete. Hauled in all the way up at the 38-yard line. Is that Optimus? It's Optimus. Alaska king of the play action, doing a little play action out of the shotgun. No pressure. Cochran clean. Oof, what a throw. It's, uh, Alaska's got all the tricks, Mike. Just when you think that they zig, they zag. Offside eye formation for the storm from the Baltimore 38, hands it off to Williams, trucking over the defender and getting his way up to the 32 yard line after rumbling forward for six. Oh, yeah, yeah. Xander Gold in the chat, Matt, is saying Alaska's on another level and I couldn't agree more. I, you know, this, is, this is just what we've been seeing out of Alaska all season long. They just, they just march up and down the field. Whatever you try to do, they can just, they do something else. Now, Baltimore had their number the first two games, but Adjustments made for sure. Williams going nowhere that time, leveled by Tony Willis right at the line. Yeah. It's finally, some positivity for Baltimore. They need to keep that up because Alaska's already in field goal range, folks. Disco FUD range for sure. Long of 53 on the season for him. That's one handed. Called in at the 26-yard line by Klein for yet another first down. As you take a look at the quarterback rating for Ron Cochran, near oh, perfect. <laughs> Lots of fours. It's like winning in Vegas. 16 of 20, over 200 yards, has a couple of touchdowns. An excellent outing for Cochran so far. Cochran out route to the bottom of the screen. That's Optimus Klein again. That puts Klein over 100 yards on the day, and we're not even through one half of football. Klein not having uh, quite those numbers last week because he was under 100. Jeff Como, the leading receiver last week for right. the Storm. Four receptions, 103 yards, including a long of 66. But Klein showing what he's made of once again tonight. Ball is handed off to Williams yet again. Rumbling his way forward, third down and one. And, you know, if this isn't Williams' territory, I don't know what is. But that'll bring us to the quip. Two-minute warning, you're watching the SFL presented by APM Music on Twitch. It's the Season 12 Semifinals. I am Mike Daggs, your play-by-play -play commentator tonight, joined in the booth with the Hall of Famer, Matt Wilson. Grayson Willis with us on stats. Merrill taking that for a first down up to the 15-yard line, and the two minutes will continue to tick away here as Alaska just wants to milk this clock, kick it up. Quip delivers simple ways to keep your mouth healthy with timed vibrations. Brush head refills for $5, refilled every three months, covered for life with free shipping for life. Use the link posted in the chat, and your purchase will help support the SFL through our partnership. Quip, a more wholesome clean. That one's taken up to the 10 yard line, second down and five. Williams, he can run, he can catch, he can do it all, Matt. I hear he kicks 15 yard field goals, too. <laughs> I bet he probably, he could probably peg an extra point. Offside eye formation on second down and five. Cochran to throw, checking oh, it down no. to Merrill, trying to get to that first down yardage. He can't do it, third down and inches. He's just drop it to him again. Hand it off to Williams. 
And he will pass. He throws it to Williams, and Williams is able to truck his way into the end zone. Uh, Jason Williams, touchdown. That's nasty. Just lowers the shoulder and makes uh, the body. Uh, McFly. Poor McFly. He got leveled. McFly. Yeah, it's, it's, oh. it's getting ugly, Mike. We're getting it into is, the duck zone. It is getting ugly. This is <laughs> it's a duck contest on the horizon, Matt. It was an Alaska game, if I remember right. King City in Alaska. Oof. Oof. Matt. 24 to nothing right now here in the first quarter. This was a game that you and I were talking about this past Friday night. We thought for sure this was going to be one of the best games of the entire season. The SFL is brought to you in part by Matt Doyle Designs, the official design partner of the SFL MediaTek Institute. Visit mediatech.edu for diploma programs. Turn your passion into your profession. And MeUndies, the world's most comfortable underwear for men and women and anyone else. Ball taken back at the goal line by Giovanni Bolt. Spins his way up to, you guessed it, folks, the 21, because that's where he goes each and every single time, no matter what. First down and 10 from the 21. 41 seconds to go here in the first half, and it would uh, strongly behoove Baltimore to try to get some sort of points on this possession because at the end of halftime, oh, Matt, boy. the Storm get the ball back. Help me. Dazzo checks it down to Gaines. Stiff arms his way up for a first down up to the 31-yard line, and Baltimore will burn their first time out. As I thought he fell out of bounds, but clearly not. Got 62 says no. And again, T. Roy Gaines. Every time Baltimore has been successful, most of the time it's been T. Roy Gaines just throwing people to the ground. It looks like he did get out of bounds. I don't know what the heck's going on. But, uh... He should have been a bigger part of the game plan. He needs to be a bigger part of the game plan going forward because Baltimore just can't sit back and try to throw because look at this. Good luck. Yeah, Alaska's got their number in the passing game today. And they're just going to keep checking it down to Gaines. Gaines stiff arming his way. Oh, nice block. Beautiful block as he gets up to midfield and he gets out of bounds. What a play by T. Roy Gaines. The crime this man isn't used for. He's a, he's a mismatch. Look at him. Sit, sit down, son. There's Alfredo again. Sit down, son. And Alfredo stuffed. Down. Carol stuffed by Alfredo. And again, he gets to that next level, takes advantage of those the poor linebacking core of Alaska. And that's where you want him. So I don't understand. But, again, I'm not the coach. We know Matt Wilson is a terrible coach. This is true. Excellent quarterback, but awful coach. Kidding, Matt. Kidding. Love you, buddy. It's true. Split backs. Dazzo to throw. Fires. Has his receiver open across the middle. Gains a first down up to the 34-yard line and will burn another timeout as Daly Holder brings in the catch. His second they on the to, day. They need to hit someone. They need to get some time somehow. If you can get some time on this blitz they're bringing, chuck it deep. Yeah. Someone's going to be wide open. Well, that's the problem, problem right is, there, Matt. There he is. Yeah. That's the problem. The Big good, sexy good Alex Dominguez has been with Alaska for five seasons, joined by Kevin Bain this season, Matt. It's just that's, that's tough. This Hail Mary formation? Yeah, it looks like it almost might be, but Dazzo stepping up and oh, right on cue. Down he goes. Big sexy three sacks on the day. Dazzle trying to get back to the line. Yeah, I think it is a Hail Mary. He's going to try to get time, but you're, not, you're just not going to. You're just not going to get time. Big sexy. Four sacks on the day. Back to the 46-yard line, and Baltimore ah. burns a timeout as they're going to see if they can potentially lob one deep here. Or put Mike Dazzo in a Pinewood box. We see some stats from Kevin Bain. 22 and a half sacks this season. First meeting with Baltimore, he had four sacks, which – was a season best. You know, Alex Dominguez already with four sacks here today. 22 and a half sacks, good enough for number two in the league, only behind EJ DeQ of Tallahassee, who had 23. So only a half sack behind for Kevin Bain. And there's the the real life Hail Mary formation, Matt. Okay, I was just 
wrong, but three defensive linemen for the storm. Pressure coming, and down he oh, goes. God. Sacked again, and that'll be how we bring the first half to an end. Quack, quack, could be in store. <laughs> Kevin Bain it's your with shipping out. another sack. <laughs> your score at the half, Baltimore Vultures nothing. Alaska Storm 24. It's been an absolutely uh, one-sided affair here in the first half of this one as we take a look at... The first half stats, and we are just oh going to. Oh my God! We are going to not do that, Matt. So I needed a break. <laughs> I did get a note from both both of the coaches. Coach Max Paul, good first half. We're loving our execution. We fully understand that Dazzo at the helm, uh, with that veteran coaching of T Pat and TJ, that this game is far from done. We'll be preparing our guys to remain focused for the second half. I'm Mike Daggs, your play-by-play -play commentator, joined in the booth by Matt Wilson, the Hall of Famer. Grayson Willis on stats. We'll see if we can get a note from Coach T. Pat later on. That one brought back to the 26. So see, the second half's already started out better for Baltimore as he gained five bonus yards on that kick return. Gets it up to the 26-yard line. So, Matt, let's take a look at some of the stats from the first half since, you know, uh, the halftime show was somewhat abridged. Quarterback Mike Dazzo, 16 completions on 24 attempts, 143 yards, no touchdowns, two picks, averaging 67% completion percentage. And that one's taken by Merrill off to the side. So... There really is no leading receiver for Baltimore. 31 yards is the best out of daily holder on a pair of receptions. T-Roy Gaines only had one rushing attempt, Matt. One, one carry in the whole first half for 17 yards. So let's take a look at the Alaska offense. Ron Cochran, 20-24, 238 yards and three touchdowns, averaging 83% completion percentage. No picks. That's why it's been so lopsided is the play out of Cochran. It's, that one is hauled in for a gain of only one. So we take a look at the stats on screen there. Jeff Como only has a pair of catches, Matt, but 66 yards and a touchdown out of him. Optimus Klein, the biggest receiving target here, uh, well, physically and statistically tonight. Six receptions, 106 yards, and a touchdown for him. Play action. Here we go again. That one over the middle. Somehow in triple coverage, he catches it for a first down, and that's been the difference. Well, yeah, Alaska got some punt it. I don't have to be a genius to figure that one out. First down and 10 from the 36-yard line. First and, 10 from your storm. and on the defensive side of things, you know the, the biggest difference on defense, well, Alex Dominguez and Kevin Bain combined six sacks. Pressure on Ron Cochran, nothing. <laughs> Merrill taking the handoff up the middle, gains four up to the 40-yard line, second down and six. Yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know what Baltimore's got to get a pick. I mean, they got to create a turnover. Well, yeah, for sure, because their first two uh, matchups, as I mentioned earlier in the game, Ron Cochran threw for five interceptions and only had one touchdown pass. He's got three today. That one also tight coverage, but also hauled in. Catch yeah, but made by Williams for another Alaska first down. Baltimore's corners are playing way far back. And I, I just, I know, it, it, it was just an easy pitch and catch. Mighty's flexing in the chat. It's kind of inappropriate, Mighty. The game's not <laughs> Well, I think Mighty has uh, earned the flex so far. Merrill taking that one up the middle. Gained only one that time. And the clock continues to roll here in the second half. Second down and nine. Coming up from the Baltimore 48-yard line, Alaska looking to extend their lead even further in this one. Cochran checking it down to Williams. Williams trying to do his best T-Roy, but that didn't work. Kaz McFly says, you know, you may have ran me over that first time, but not today, Williams, not today. Well, not this half. And also, Williams didn't get a chance to get 
going really as soon as he caught the ball he got hammered so the baltimore defense can't play so far are or off the Alaska receivers. Yeah, this is better. Yeah, five yards off but the line. Perfect. Make Cochran beat you deep. I know he has, but still may try to. And he's going to try to beat him deep again, and he, oh, gosh, oh. he should have. He should have, but he doesn't. A rare Optimus Klein miss. They don't mark it as a drop, so I'm not, I'm not sure how. I think the corner got in the way and deflected it at the last second. So a little out of disco FUD range here, you know, since it would be <laughs> about a 65 yard or so we'll go ahead and uh, punt 2-2 on to punt for the storm their first punt of the evening if I recall correctly the only ballerina in the SFL oh and nearly blocked that one taken back at the 10 yard line can't really get much more out of it as he spins his way up to the 14 first down and 10 from the Baltimore 14 yard line and we see the stats for Giovanni Bolton. Absolutely outstanding free safety. 21 interceptions, excuse me, 21 pass deflections, 18 interceptions in his last two seasons. Very impressive wow. stats out of Bolt. It's all about this offense, right? Can they move the ball? Can they score a touchdown? That's the key. Dazzo under center here on first down. Hands the ball off to T. Roy Gaines for only his second run of the night. And oh. look at him go. Gaines another 20 yards. 21 yards on that one, Matt. 21 yards. That is our ever scroll block of the game. Let's check out this block then. Let's see. Is the fullback? Boom. Yep. Look at him. Takes him right out. And T. Roy just running. I mean, like I say, that's the story of the game for me is – Alaska's playing, I mean, exceptionally well, but Baltimore has not used gains. And I mean, yeah, two carries for 38 yards, two carries. <laughs> He's averaging 19 a carry. T. Roy gains. Dazzo under center. First down and 10 from their own 35 yard line. Pressure coming quickly here. Dazzo able to get the ball away, but hit as he released it. Nearly intercepted. Ever scroll by movement blocks blue light to protect your eyes from digital screens. Don't hurt your eyes, Matt, by checking out SFL action. Protect them and see every moment by using the promo code SimulationFL at purchase from movement.com. MVMT.com. A portion of your purchase supports the SFL through our partnership. Movement premium watches, sunglasses, and accessories. Matt, I've even been told that you wear your sunglasses at night. And oh, that ball handed Roy. off to T-Roy yet again, barreling his way up the middle for a gain of nine. My God, he's almost close to 100 yards. <laughs> I think they're, they're going to be counting his, uh, those are his all-purpose yards. I believe that stat was. It's still impressive. It's still very impressive. And Dazzo going to throw. Man, tricked me, and I think everybody here as you heard that collective gasp coming yeah, from they the were crowd. Yeah, for uh, Dazzo's life, I think. Warfield gets that one hauled in for a first down up to midfield. Let's go! 76 viewers with us here tonight. Appreciate everybody being here. Iceman, Gervin44, Base Scout, Optimus Klein, The Dead Knight, Alien Nation, The Brown Knight, Eric, JDWA, and more. Dazzo complete to the top of the screen, hauled in by Graham. It'll be his fourth catch on the night. Ram Jr. just sits in a zone where no one is, and uh, for once, no, you know, Alaska playing more zone, and he was open. Graham now tied with Daly Holder for the most yards receiving by a Baltimore receiver tonight with 31 so they haven't been running gains but the passing game really hasn't been getting a lot going either offset eye formation gains taking the handoff running up the middle getting first downs that's all he does gets his way up to the 38 yard line first and 10 baltimore yep just gains doing what he does use that so matt unless alaska Excuse me, unless Baltimore can turn this one around. Alaska could potentially be heading towards their third in a row championship game as we have some MeUndies laundry on the field. That one's picked, but it's not going to matter as 
The defense jumped off sides, but still picked and hauled in by Ryan Davidson. But see what that flag was. And it is indeed a neutral zone. Infraction on Big Sexy. Bad Dominguez. The ball was not snapped. MeUndies are the world's most comfortable underwear. Visit MeUndies.com slash SimulationFL for 15% off your purchase. It'll also help support the SFL through our partnership. Give the gift of comfort or just buy yourself some. With a 100% satisfaction guarantee, free shipping and return, signature soft and stretchy. MeUndies. Dazzo to throw on first and five. A weird yardage that that one is. Hauled in four first down by Graham. So getting back to my point, though, Matt, um, unless uh, unless Baltimore can turn this one around, Alaska could be heading towards their their third consecutive championship game. Who, who was – here's some trivia for everybody. Who was the last team that was able to defeat the Storm in the playoffs to prevent them from going any further? Who was the last team to beat the Storm? Your answer is in the chat. Ready, set, go. Dazzo, back to throw, fires over the middle, complete. That one good for a gain of six, second down and four coming up. So let's see. Uh, and, yeah, there you go. Well, I guess the Alaska guys would know. It was Vancouver back in season nine. So close, Eric. You had the season nine part right. But, yes, Vancouver in season nine was the last team that was able to beat the storm in the playoffs. Dazzo under center on second and four. Checks it down to Gaines. Gaines getting his stiff arm out, but that time well defended by Ryan Davidson as he stops Gaines short of the six. Still brings up a very manageable third and one, and for the love of God, give it to Gaines. Optimus, Optimus Klein calling for the rubber ducky, Matt. Let's see what happens here. Crowd on their feet here in Anchorage. Power eye formation. Dazzo hands it off to Gaines, and he's actually stopped. Stuffed at the line. Fourth and one coming up. Not a fan of that, that run. Wasn't quick. It wasn't quick enough hitter. But, and now you got to kick a field goal, which is almost meaningless at this point. Now the offense is still out here on the field, Matt. You better not burn a timeout or it would be an extreme waste. No, I think they might actually snap this one. Dazzo under center, waiting for somebody to jump, and nope, I was what dead wrong. Call the timeout with still like 12 seconds to go on the play clock. Oof. I think his coach is going to rip him a new one. Here we go. There's T Pat. See, see what T Pat says to me, Dazzo. Look away, look away, oh, children. No. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. T Pat, not, not a fan of what just transpired. I think Dazzo's been hit so many times he doesn't know what time it is. So field goal try coming up for the Vultures. Shark Tarkington, 27 of 28 on the season. He had a long of 52. This one from 35 as the kick is up from the left hash, and it is good to at least get Baltimore on the board. Put it on the board. Sorry. Trying to be excited as I can for Baltimore here. <laughs> By summoning your inner Truello. Uh, you, you made Cam laugh somehow, Matt. I don't know what you said that was funny, but you said something. I'm, I'm yes. The SFL is presented by APM Music and is brought to you in part by Movement Premium Watches, Sunglasses, and Accessories. Quip, Perfect Oral Care Delivered, Score Stream, the official score updates app of the SFL, and Spy Goat, the sound choice. That one returned by Tobin up to the 24-yard line. Or Alaska will look to see if they can put even more points on the board and head on back to... oh. When, when you said hide the children, Matt. So we take a look at the team comparison yet again. The, the points per game allowed is uh, is the big one that I want to look at right now, Matt. I mean, uh, Alaska was first in points per game allowed, and, and look, they've allowed three so far in this one. But Baltimore held most teams to under 20, and Alaska already at 24, oh. and we're only in the third quarter. So that pass is incomplete. Second down and 10 coming up. Well, Hernandez is not known for his hands, and he shows why there. That's why they paid a minimum wage. <laughs> I don't 
don't know, Mike, if uh, if Alaska scores a touchdown with two minutes to go before the fourth, the, the duck contest might have to come out if it's 30 to, <laughs> 30 to three with in, before the fourth quarter. I, I think I might have to agree. Cochran firing to the top of the screen. That one hauled in for a gain of about five yards. Jeff Como now with 69 yards on the day on three receptions. And this isn't a slight to Baltimore. It's a very great organization. It's just sometimes the duck has to come out. It doesn't matter who you are or where you are. <laughs> the duck just has to come out. Desperate times call for desperate ducks. Cochran back to pass. Fires over the middle. Another first down. That one up to the 38-yard line. Cochran having an absolutely fantastic outing today. 25 completions on 31 attempts, 272 yards, three touchdowns. Quarterback rating of 135. As close to perfect as you can get right now. 80% completion percentage. Just can do no wrong so far in this one. Three receivers to the top of the screen. Cochran firing deep to one of them. Can't quite get it. As that one is batted away by Thornberry. Second out and ten. The, he's going for the duck right there. He wants one too. But it, <laughs> Ron it, Cochran but wants the duck. Says, there will be no ducks. <laughs> so we take a look. Adamon takes. Trying to will his defense to get a stop, get the ball back, maybe even get a touchdown on defense. Let's get it somehow as that ball is handed off to Merrill. Merrill's able to gain three on that one and bring up a third down and seven. All right, here we go, Baltimore. Let's do this. Let's, let's, let's get a pick six. Change. I would, I would make it a, well, 14-point game. That's, that's been doable in two quarters or one quarter. Alaska, though. Well, Alaska's going to throw. Wide. So key play here of the Baltimore defense can actually get something, get a takeaway. Oh, and he almost does. Oh, he should have had that one. Joe Dazzo had a pick last week. Can't haul that one in, but it does bring up a fourth down. Duck watch might be over. <laughs> I don't know, Matt. There's so many people that want the duck. I think we should just go ahead and do a duck contest. It's the last right. game for us of the season. Yeah, what's Cam going to do, fire us? Well, I, I doubt it. Cam loves the duck contest. What are you talking about? Punt is away. Taken back at about the 20-yard line. Oh, some shifty moves. Gets his way up to the 28. Giovanni Bolt on the return. So let's uh, let's let this one run to the end of the third quarter, Matt, and then we will. Uh, no, no, no guesses yet. No guesses yet. I see Ocho, Ocho Tona, eleven, is making a guess. We have not opened up the guessing. Dominguez wants a duck, Matt. T-Roy Gaines takes the swing pass. Oh, and he's able to break the tackle and keep on going. Look at that. Steps out of bounds all the way up at midfield. One man offense. T.Y. Well, Gaines. That's, just got to use him, folks. Just, just got to use him a little more. Ryan Tobin getting that tackle. Wriggles out of the grasp of Evan Carroll. I mean, heck, it doesn't have to be. If Baltimore comes back, it could be a comeback duck. And that will bring us to the end of the third quarter. You're watching the SFL on Twitch. It's the Season 12 semifinals. Three quarters in the books, one remaining. Alaska out in front by 21 points. Fours up. I'm Mike Dags, your play-by-play -play commentator, joined in the booth by Matt Wilson. Grayson Willis is in the stats. Buick Roadmaster. T-Roy Gaines bottled up at the line on that one. Actually loses the yard. A rare yard loss by T. Roy. All right, Matt. So, what are, what are the contest rules going to be this time? How much time do you want to give them to give their final guesses? Uh, till uh, nine minutes in the fourth quarter. 
All right, till nine minutes in the fourth quarter, you can now make your guesses to what the final score will be. It's not going to be the closest combined total. It's going to be the actual closest to the final score. Oh, as Warfield gets some good yards on that one up to the 29-yard line. So if you have a guess, if you want a chance to win a 3D printed duck, go ahead and post your guess in the chat. I'm going to try to actually record all these. Hopefully... My man Grayson Willis can also help me try to record sure, all these. Make sure you put the, the team, the winner, not yeah, just the score. Yeah, if, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, especially uh, you know the trash car, twenty-seven, twenty-four. Well, well, who? Dazzo in the gun, four receiver set, fires over the middle, and that one's complete for another first down. That one hauled in by Graham yet again. There are a lot of scores being guessed. Grayson, Grayson, record the scores. Matt, you gave them too much time. <laughs> High formation on first down and 10. Dazzo finds his target and Bishop Warfield. Oh, I thought, I thought he was gonna go in. He stepped out at the nine. Oh no. Take a look at Bishop Warfield's stats for the season. 77 receptions over 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns. Tried to get one there, but the toes went out of bounds. At least it stops the clock, and they're at the Alaska 9. So, oh, well, now the clock's running again, so they better get on it. Dazzo checks it down to Gaines. Trucks through Whoa. the first defender. Can't get through the second one, but he does get a first down and goal from the four-yard line. Time's almost up. The stats struck is saying, thank God. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm even trying to record these two, but I'm, I am failing. Dazzo looking towards the end zone, has a man in the back of the end zone, and it's good for a touchdown. Hauled in, and Baltimore gets their first touchdown of the ball game. Nope, that was before the nine-minute. It was after the nine-minute mark, so scores after that do not count. <laughs> All right, so the final score has already been guessed then, huh? Yep. All right, the king of noodles is the last one. Now, I don't know, Ron just made a guess. You want to let Ron in on it, man? Yeah, he's the last one. All right. Ron Cochran's the last one to make a guess. No more guesses. The guessing is closed. Grayson, if you can uh, post me a list of the scores, that would be fantastic. No, Andy, it will not be a 69 to 69 tie. It just, it won't. It just won't. All right. Back to seriousness now, Mike. It's, two, it's a two-score two score game. game. Two-score game. It's not over. Alaska, 24, Baltimore, 10. We have a ball game here. We will, uh, we'll weird. give an update on the score contest as soon as I have all of the scores. We're counting on you, Grayson, you and your Buick Roadmaster. Kick taken back at the goal line. Being returned out to the 24. Eight minutes, 53 seconds to go in this one. And now the Baltimore defense, here comes, we need to see one of those infamous picks right here, right now. Pick six would be glorious. Well, Alaska might want to throw a swing pass here. Grayson Willis coming through on the clutch. Williams taking the handoff, stiff oh. armoring the defender, but Giovanni Bolt levels him back at the 27 yard line. Gains only three, second and seven. Grayson, it looks like he actually he got all the scores, Matt. What a this guy's boss. My hero. What a boss. Matt, we should actually install heat in that Roadmaster at some point. I mean, I'm like a few seasons from now, not yet. Yeah, but not yet. No. Someday, someday. Cochran under center split. Uh, offset eye formation, I should say. Ball is handed off to Williams again, trying to get his way up the middle. This time gains four, bringing up a third down and three. And now this is interesting because... It could be in a situation where Alaska tries to run Williams and Baltimore could stop him with their plethora. Of... 
see what they come up with. A stop would be key here as that pass is complete. Tom Thomas Klein for a first down, stepping out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Optimus doing his best by Tumbo. No, no, no. <laughs> Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram, all of which are at Simulation FL. Thank you, Andy and Hamilton, all. for keeping it simple. That is correct. Cochran, seven-step drop, looking, firing over the middle. That one's hauled in by Como for a gain of five. Matt, what, is, what does Baltimore need to do other than just obviously getting a stop? But what do they need to do here to get back in this one? I mean, is that turnover really the only way that it's going to happen? Or they, can they just Not, get a stop and try to get things going on offense? They don't need a turnover yet, but they can't let them get in uh, Disco Flood range. Yeah, disco Flood range will throw the oh. whole thing off as Tomo hauls that one in for a first down up to the 46. Alaska's going to have to get greedy here, try to air it deep, and then uh, Cochran making an uncharacteristic mistake. That would be a, a good chance for Baltimore here. Ron Cochran throwing an out route to Optimus Klein, catching it for a gain of six and slides out of bounds. Second and four. That's not what you want if you're Baltimore. They just need to stuff, keep everybody in front, send the house, plan for Williams' run here. And just stop him. Merrill taking the handoff, spinning his way for a first down and more as he passes the 40-yard line, getting all the way up to the 37, and the clock will keep on running. Almost in flood range. Merrill with a little whoop, and then a little whoop. And a first down. Little Chris Berman there for <laughs> First down and 10 for the Storm. I formation, three receiver set. Merrill taking the handoff again, running straight into a wall of Vulture defenders. Gains three, second and seven. And now you're going to get into a situation, I believe, where. Alaska is just going to try to run, 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 run the clock, kick a field goal, and say, good luck, Baltimore. Cochran dropping back to pass, throws to the top of the screen, hauled in. I believe that was Optimus Klein on the catch. It was indeed the Optimus Klein for a gain of five, third down and a manageable two with this running game, Matt. And the clock is running. The clock is running. Merrill's running. Right. Williams is running. Everybody's running. Even t is running when he gets the ball. Ron Cochran changing the play at the line. Dropping back. Throws oh for yet another first down. To Optimus Klein, the clock will continue to run. Four minutes, 40 seconds to go here in the ball game. Now Baltimore needs a turnover, I think, Matt. Yes. This is like a death by a thousand short passes. A backups? No, never mind. I, no, I still no, saw a backup. There will be no backups quite this, quite at this stage. It didn't look like I didn't see the cocker mustache throwing me off. <laughs> he shaved at halftime. That'd be very weird. Carry by Merrill gains eight and that'll keep the clock rolling and give him a second and an easily manageable two so Chris 250 505 is the username Matt that is currently in the lead here with a final score guess of 27 to 10 only three points off on the final score is someone hot on his heels 
Well, next up would be Crazy Eights with his final score guess of 27 to 13. He's only six points off, so, so we shall see. Merrill takes a handoff on that one, and he is stopped. Third down and one. Who are you going to call? Jason Williams. Pretty much. If there's one yard to gain and it don't look good, who are you going to call? Jason Williams. <laughs> he ain't afraid Steven Hacker yard. saying, hey, I had 31-10. Yes, you do. That would be seven points off of the actual final score, not three. So you're in third place. Maths is hard. Hashtag maths. And he's a stats guy. Offset eye formation on third and one. Cochran under center. Letting the clock tick down. Hands it off to Williams. And he easily gains his first down and a few more up to the 11-yard line. We are under three minutes to go. First down and 10, Alaska. Told you. Like sands through the hourglass, these are the days of our lives. And the clock is tick tick tick. Let's go. Mr. Andrews says he had 30 or uh, 27 to 13. I think Grayson might have missed that one. I don't I don't see that one on my list unless I also missed it. Offset eye formation here on first down and 10. Two minutes, 22 seconds to go as this one is snapped. Hands it off to Merrill running off tackle to the left. Is anyone going to stop him? Bolt grabs him and tackles him down at the one yard line, but second and inches from the Baltimore one. That'll end up bringing us to the quip two minute warning. Ron Cochran under center here as we have two minutes to go in this one. Hands the ball off to Merrill, and he is oh. also stopped at the line, but painfully for Baltimore, it is actually a first down. So I have to kill that Ghostbusters music again. <laughs> it's Williams time, huh, Matt? Da -na -da -na. When it's first and goal, oh God. You're way ahead. who are you going to call? We'll see. Offset eye formation on first down and goal. Cochran under center. Cochran hands the ball off to Williams, and he trucks his way into the end zone for an Alaska touchdown. It looks like it. we can say it at this point, Matt, Alaska will be going back to the championship. He truly is a guy to now. Williams is taking it, plowing over. Oh, I don't even want to say that number. But don't don't leave, folks, because Baltimore has a drive and they well, they, a duck at they stake. do. There's a duck at stake now, and right now Stephen Hacker already celebrating in the chat. Matt, he thinks that he has the duck in his grasp. And uh, fun fact from. Mighty RX, Max Paul, the coach of the Alaska Storm, at seven-minute drive to ice the game. They just owned it for most of that fourth quarter. They've owned it for most of the ball game, quite frankly. They uh, they certainly took what Baltimore gave them in the first two meetings and said, all right, I see you, and I will uh, get this corrected. And here we are now in the game that matters the most to them up to this point in the season, and they have just absolutely dominated Baltimore the entire ball game. Yeah, it hasn't been close. We got down to 14, Baltimore did, and then that drive happened. I be lurking two tackles, one for a loss, Matt, as he uh, brings down Giovanni Bolt, bringing it up to the 26-yard line. Minute 50 to go in this one. All right, so hypothetically, Matt, if Baltimore is to score a touchdown here, and Grayson Willis will have the score spot on. As yeah, will <laughs> as will whoever Cheeseburger is. We'll have to print up a couple of ducks. Because that one is hauled oh, in and no. a late hit. Multiple pieces of Meandy's 
laundry on the field. I think we got five pieces of underwear. <laughs> MeUndies everywhere. Late hit, number 29, defense. Late hit called on Evan Carroll. Taking a dive onto Daly Holder long after he was down. And even more concerning, the backups are in, so the pass rush is done. So, yes, we might. Two ducks could be in our future. Oh, whoa. Well. Ducks what for to everyone. Do, what to do? No. Oh. I'm the duck factory. I say no. Actually, I, I misspoke. Warhammer also guessed 3117. We'll have to oh. obviously uh, double check all these, all these numbers at the end. You know, but, uh, yeah, there could be three ducks on the line. Three. Three ducks, you're, Matt. You're, oh, you're the filament. One inch, one inch ducks. Dazzo fired <laughs> over the over the middle. That one's also hauled in. Once again, taken by Daily Holder. 33% scale ducks for everyone. <laughs> no, you can't change the duck. Oh, and there's a sack. The sacks do still exist. Big Sexy, that's not the backups, Matt. That's Big Sexy right there. Big Sexy trying to save you from having to print another duck. Dazzo looking to throw, fires over the middle into triple coverage. That one's incomplete, trying to hit Daily Holder again. Steven Hacker must be absolutely just sweating bullets right now, waiting to see the outcome of this one. 82 people watching for the fate of the ducky. Never let go, duck. Never let go. The duck will share his board because he floats. Five wide for Baltimore going for the triple duck is Dazzo Dazzo back to throw fires towards the end zone and that oh. one's complete for a first down I'm sweating now <laughs> Bishop Warfield with the reception the five wide formation stays Dazzo under pressure throws towards the end zone wow. nearly picked off pass was intended for Cody, uh, Cody Apollo and batted away, second down and ten with one minute to go. Oh, oh. I need CPR now. The commission, right. the chat, posting a reminder to everybody, Dallas at Denver is coming up next as we have game two of the SFL Season 12 semifinals to decide who is going to go and play Alaska in the championship game. Dazzo in the gun, fires towards the end zone, complete. And he falls into the end zone for a touchdown. Lloyd Graham gets some more points on the board for Baltimore. <laughs> I need to implement another tiebreaker. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been great if everybody had guessed the same score and you had to print up, like, 15 ducks? <laughs> I'm on strike. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> Extra point try forthcoming from Shark Tarkington. The joke's on you. You got paid shipping three times, huh? Oh, oh whatever. <laughs> Extra point is up, and it is good. 31 to 17. Your score with less than a minute to go. Matt, it all comes down to what Alaska can do for you now. Nothing. There's no time. They're just going to kneel it. There's still a timeout left. You're right. So this this will probably be the final score. Unless, well, the onside kick. Unless There's the still onside hope. kick. Fil say, hashtag save the filament. Get the onside kick. <laughs> kick is away. Oh, and it is oh. recovered by Baltimore. And there's a flag. I think it's. Did they touch it too soon or is it roughing? Late hit. Late hit. Late hit. That puts them in field goal range, Matt. They're not going to kick a field goal, but no. there's still a chance. There is still Likes a there's chance. A, there's a chance. <laughs> Duckspiracies. <laughs> Duckspiracies, indeed. Everyone's hating 70 right now. Boom. He oh, he dove right on him. Oh, painful. Painful. The onside kick actually recovered by Baltimore. They now have it. At the Alaska 44-yard line, I'm Mike Daggs, your play-by-play commentator. Matt Wilson is the duck printing man. Grayson Willis in the stats. Roadmaster Dazzo in the gun, firing over the middle. That one hauled in by Graham. First down 
And they hurry back to the line as they are trying to desperately save Matt from having to print multiple duckies. Dazzo firing deep down the field, and he has oh, Warfield one-handed at the 14-yard line. 37 oh, seconds God. to go. Go, Baltimore. Go. Get it into the end zone. Four receivers set. Dazzo looking. Pressure coming. He fumbles. And Alaska recovers. And Alaska's going to walk out of here with the win, 31-17. You better get printing, Matt. There's ducks to hand out. <laughs> Matt is just stunned silent. Kevin Bain, 22 and a half sacks this season. An absolute force on that defensive line for the Alaska Storm. As Ron Cochran takes a knee and Baltimore burns their final timeout. One more kneel down will do it in this one. Ron Cochran ending the day 31 of 39, 303 yards and three touchdowns. You can't have much more of a clean performance than that. Jeff Como, 82 yards on five catches. He had a touchdown. Optimus Klein, 126 yards on 10 catches and a touchdown for him as well. Robert Merrill, the leading running back for the Storm with 52 yards on 16 attempts, only averaging 3.3 per carry, but enough to get it done. Jason Williams, 24 yards, but one of those carries had a touchdown involved, so you can't argue with that. Also, hauling in a touchdown through the air was Jason Williams, doing a little bit of everything. Baltimore will end their season with a loss, but an impressive season they had as they are able to get it all the way to the semifinals, but can't go any further than that. Folks, the Alaska Storm are going to be back in the championship for the third season in a row. Who will they be going up against? Will it be Denver or will it be Dallas? Find out next as in about 29 minutes we'll kick off that ball game. Your final score in this one, 31-17. to 17. Three glorious winners of the rubber ducky that by the way is not rubber plastic. it's plastic. plastic they are plastic ducks but that means they will float i'm not sure if they will float standing no. up or laying down i don't know interesting uh, interesting to see we'll have to put it in a bathtub find out what happens to it so that wraps up tonight's game matt final thoughts on this one yeah that was a great effort by alaska and the misuse I think of Kilroy Gaines is going to haunt Baltimore for the rest of this short season and you know, needing to adjust for the next. If he was used, this could have been a much different ball game, a much different score, and maybe you force Alaska to do things just a little bit differently. But good job to Alaska, and they're moving on, and I'd be afraid to face them. Coming up next, we'll find out who Alaska will place in the championship play in the championship game as the Dallas Lobos head to the Mile High City to take on the Denver Nightwings. That game will kick off here in about 27 minutes now at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central Time, so don't go anywhere. Let's take a look at our extraordinary Everest player of the game. It is, of course, Ron, quarterback Ron Cochran. 300 yards, three touchdowns, excellent quarterback rating, 32 of 40 on the day absolutely Ooh. crazy so matt it's been a pleasure calling all these games with you once again this season looking forward to getting season 13 going already but we'll uh we'll have to see this one last semifinal game and then the championship game next week and then take a little break for a couple of months and then we'll be back this summer for season 13 it has been a pleasure this has been a presentation of the sfl presented by apm music for matt wilson and Grayson Willis, I am Mike Dagg saying thank you for joining us and good night, everybody. <laughs>